everyone, it's Diane from Boho Stamper, back today with another card, and last Friday, <clears throat> we were using um, the Gina K stamp set from a Big Hello kit, and I was using the Happy Herbs stamp set, and said that I wanted to try again this week to do another one. I needed birthday cards and I wanted to do some watercoloring, use my watercolor pencils and stuff on this. Well, it just so happens that I need a bunch of sympathy cards here. Again, I mean, this is getting to be <clears throat> just really, really not my favorite card to make, I'm telling you. And then my son called this morning and a friend of his, their, their doggy, passed away, so he needs a sympathy card for her. So anyway, we're going to get into um, still using the Happy Herbs, and um, I will try to remember to link where you can still get the stamp and die set uh, through GinaK.com, I think it is. I have the link saved, and I'll add it down in the description box. Um, I'm also using some of my Stampin' Up! products. I'm going to use Dear Doily because I just really like the font of this. I use this quite frequently. And it's pretty simple. You know how very sorry I am for your loss. And then you can have room to write your own little message in there. So if you are shopping with Boho Stamper at all this month and you use the May shopping code, I will be happy to send out a little thank you. When you spend $50 or more, I'm going to spend send a package of pastel pearls. And if you spend $100 or more, I'm going to send you the pastel pearls, as well as the new in-color matte dots. So you can save the shopping code and add that in. And I'm not even going to go into my... Um, my sales pitch today because I want to get on with this card because I actually have two and I'm going to do a second video with the other one but this is the one that I'm doing right now with the happy herbs and so what we need to do for that one is um, and I'm not even going to be able to give you specific colors of some of the stuff because some of the things were from that kit still from that kit and uh, actually her green might be on this thing. Oh, it is. Um, this is, I think this is jelly bean green. But I got to tell you, it's not really a bright green, and that's why I picked it. It's sort of just a pretty olivey color. So I took my 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock, and I cut it in half. And I'm going to score that at four and a quarter. And there's my card base. I'm using Very Vanilla by Stampin' Up! for my, my card front and my little plant that we're going to stamp. I'm going to stamp that on there. And this is a piece of <laughs> no idea what it's from. It just happened to be sticking out of my um, scrap box. I don't even know what that box is from. I was going to say maybe it was from my... Um, St. Patrick's Day stuff, but I don't know if it is. Anyways, I think it was scrapbook paper because it's only one-sided, and but it's not real heavy, so I'm able to use that, and I, I just like the way that it made the little frame around our vanilla. So I need to trim this to four and one-eighth, by five and three-eighths. And then when I did pick this paper, up, I saw that it's a little bit distressed on the edges. I don't know if you can see the brown. And I thought that was kind of pretty. And because I'm using brown ink on my um, plant, I decided just to go with this little opportunity here that it showed me it liked brown. And so I'm just using my blending brush. And I still had some soft suede ink on it. So I just kept going with the soft suede and blend it around my edges a little bit just to give this a little distressed and um, it actually looked kind of pretty then when I did my stamping in 
brown. And we're actually going to get into that and get it done quickly because it needs to dry. Because I am doing some watercolor. And so that was all I had done to that background paper. Okay. Put my brush away. Set that aside with my card base, which I need to use my bone folder on that so that it will lie flat. And then my very vanilla, the first thing I want to do is my background. Because the background is watercolor. And this is not watercolor paper. This is just regular cardstock. So I don't want to get it super wet. But I want, um, I want the cardstock to be wet enough that my ink will move. And I hope I have enough water in there because I poured a little bit out on my acrylic block. Let me add a little bit to my spritzer here. And this is actually a very quick way to do a background for a card. So if you need um, sympathy cards or something like this quickly, this would be something you could manage. And, and I have stuff everywhere. I'm actually doing like five different designs right now. So I've taken some of my old olive and I just used my re-inker and put a couple drops of old olive ink onto an acrylic block and then dripped a little bit of water on there, which is why my spritzer was a little empty. So just let that mix and set off to the side for a moment. I'm going to use just a water spritzer and spritz my cardstock, like I said, making it damp enough that the ink's going to move, but not saturating the paper. I want to keep my design sort of in this area because I'm going to stamp my my greeting on the top right. And the green can be behind that, but I want it focused mainly behind my plant. So I'm just going to hold this over my box down here and spritz it. So it's wet enough now. You can see that it's a little bit shiny. And I'm using my paintbrush. Dipping it in that old olive re-inker. It's been watered down. And I'm just going to let that ink flow on the paper where it needs to go. Wherever the water takes it, that's good. And it's going to bloom out a little bit. If it's not moving the way you want it to, you want it to go a little bit more, you can add a little bit more water. And I got ink over here, and I'm not going to be happy with that. So I'm going to do another one because I'm picky. I'm going to save that for something different. And I also, when I added water to my old olive re-inker, oh, you know what I lied? That's not old olive. That's pure pizzazz. I brought them both out because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use, and I went with pure pizzazz. So scratch that old olive note that I... I had said, that's better, it's darker. Well, I'm already using, losing my sheen on my paper. It's a little warm here, and so it's drying kind of quick. There we go. So can you see how my, my paint is just blossoming out? And I know sometimes if you watercolor, you don't necessarily like those blossoms, but for this technique, I like them. I don't have any going up here. And our paper may curl a little bit. That's okay. We have a we have a trick for that. All right. That should probably be good enough. Let me see how I have. You know what I have is my mask from before. Is that going to... That'll do. That just gives me an idea of where my plant that we're going to do will be on my panel. Okay, let me set that aside. 
I'm going to have that ink off of the block so I don't spill it on anything. Because that's about the last thing we want to do. All right. And that's just going to go back into my wrapping because I think that's the only piece of that paper I have left. I have no idea where it was from. And we're going to set this aside to dry. And because it is warmer, it shouldn't take too awfully long. Okay, then I'm using Saddle Brown Stays On. And I'm going to use my Stamparatus because I want to make sure that my plant stamps well. So this will allow me to stamp a couple of times if I need to. And I think I did need to do that on the... Oh, actually, I was going to do this as um, just a single layer card. And I decided to die cut the, the plant out. So this is lined up for... the layer but it doesn't really matter. Mm -mm. I'm going to stamp this on my very vanilla and as much as I like this stamp set I really find this one a little bit hard to color in the leaves. I, I can't tell the difference between the leaves and the stems on this so that's been a bit of a, a challenge. Alrighty. Oops, sorry. What would it be if I didn't hit you in the head at least once, right? And, oh, hi, sis. Okay, so now we need to use watercolor pencils and color in our image. I'm using sort of uh, red. This is actually, this is Stampin' Up! Real Red, Stampin' Up! Pumpkin Pie. And then, I'm telling you, I have pencils everywhere. This was Royal Watercolor Pencils, um, Studio 71 Brown, Studio 71 Green, because I wanted a couple shades of green. I think that might be it. So anyways, I used some red. And I'm just going to get this color in here, because these are watercolor pencils. It would be darker on the outer edges of the pot. Lighter towards the center, and that's where I'm adding the orange to make this more of a terracotta looking. Just scribble some color in there, and then you know, most uh, terracotta pots have some moss on them, and that's why I pulled in a little bit of green here. We can always add a little bit more of the orange if we feel we need it to be. And watercolor pencil uh, or pen. Here's my water brush. Now I'm just using the water in here and I'm going to start blending all of these colors together across my terracotta pot. And somehow it just manages to work. Again, this is just plain cardstock, so my brush is not really soppy wet. I haven't squeezed a lot of water down in there. Just enough to get my pencil colors moving, blending together. Leaving a little bit of white right in the center so that it makes it a little bit more dimensional. 
Now this set does have the coordinating dies, so I'm going to cut that out. And then I just want to squeeze my water brush until my water comes out clear. Because now I'm going to do my little leaves. Again, I can't really tell on this where, let me move, these are the regular colored pencils, I believe. This is from another project I was doing. Oh, they're for the other sympathy card. And I'll add that video <clears throat> for Monday's video. So I just used the darker green, tried to figure out what was a leaf. Even looking at the um, oops, come here. The page that came with it, it's still really very hard to see what is a leaf and what's a stem. And I guess, to be honest, the image is so small, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but I didn't want to fill in everything, you know, I wanted it to look like it had some stem. And then I got to thinking, you know what, this is watercolor, so um, watercolors don't always have fine outline detail anyway. It doesn't have to be perfect. I did a little bit of the dark green on the stem because I am going to go back in there with uh, the brown. And then I took a little bit of this lemon limey green, added it, just did a couple of little streaks here and there. <clears throat> oh, I worked in my flowers yesterday. And was barely able to breathe last night. Good grief, the pollen's something. And then I just took my brown and went back through the stems a little bit just to try to define that the leaves aren't really floating in the air here. They do have a base. Again, no need to be perfect. And then I took my water brush and I just Kind of went over all the leaves. Didn't care if I got into the background or not. Again, it's a watercolor, so. Leaves all blended together nice. And that was the end of that. So it didn't, the longest part was doing the terracotta pot. I don't know how well that's going to show up here. Uh, as I said, we have a coordinating die. So I'm going to die cut that out. Didn't use a lot of water, so the cardstock's not really too wet. And i got to shake you up a little bit here. You now I like to make sure that you're awake and watching. Give you a little shaky shaky. Oh, come on, line up pretty for me. Thank you. So you could do this and make a nice birthday card. Um, I think with the plant, that would be a nice welcome to the neighborhood card. And there we go. Save my excess paper. out of the way and then let me see where we're at with this how's it drying it's still a little bit damp so I'm gonna mute you for a second while I um, use my heat tool and try to dry this a little bit so
I think that feels better. It might still be a little bit damp, but I think we can move on here. Okay, so I need to get my Stamparatus back out. Again, I have my stamp already lined up on here where, where I want to add my greeting. And I am adding this again with my Saddle Brown, just because it will um, match the outline of my plant. I think I needed to stamp this a couple of times here. Sometimes I don't always like to do just too much black in my sympathy cards. You know, like pastels, I think, are really pretty for sympathy. And um, like in this case, the brown stays on. I think browns and grays sometimes work really well. My next card does use some black in it, but um, I also have made it a little bit pastel. So, okay, so now my paper is a little bit curled because of the, the water. And a way to fix that is to run it back through your emboss machine. So my plates are well worn and have a lot of ridges in them. If you want your watercolor panel to stay nice and smooth, you can wrap it in a piece of just copy paper and put it through your, your embossing machine and it should help flatten this out a little bit. I actually found though that I like the texture that the plates give to this panel. It almost makes it look I don't know, leathery uh, suede -y. I, I don't know. Oh, and unfortunately, mine leaves dirty marks. And I hope it didn't. I hope those will come off. Well, let's see. If not, we might be adding some splatter to the background. I think I'm going to have to add some splatter. Oh, gone it. See, my my embossing has, must have something in on the rollers a little bit, and it left some little speckles. So I'll deal with it. I will work with that. And um, see, I guess I may as well just... That looks almost blue. So I guess I want a bit of a darker green then. Trick on my box. Forgot I had it out there from spritzing. How about Ooh. maybe a shaded spruce? I'm only gonna add a teeny tiny bit anyway. make it look like the spots on there aren't really an accident. I think I'm getting my shirt and not the card. I want too much. Now that I have the other That'll do. See, everything can pretty much be fixed. Not necessarily what I wanted, but it'll work. Okay. Now I can add my my plant, my background paper, 
and the cardstock. So let's just use tape runner. Uh huh. There it is. I was gonna say I had it out here just a few minutes ago. So let's just do double sided tape here or sticky tape, whatever you want to call it. Get this on here. Mm, get this on. Sometimes when you score and then fold your card, you get just this teeny tiny little edge where it didn't line up. And if I try to trim that, I never manage to trim just that part off and I make a mess. So I like to look at both sides of the card and see which one I want to be my front. So I'm going to go carefully here because that's still a little bit damp right there. Make sure I have this all glued up on the back really well. And then if you're worried because it's like mine is still damp down here in this corner, I will probably set my uh, Stamparatus or something on top of this to help flatten it out. And then let's add some dimensionals to the back of the plant. Actually, I like the splatter on there. It's kind of pretty. Happy accidents. made my finger sore yesterday. I was I had some flowers that I was drying. And I don't know if you can tell down here, I intentionally tried to keep some of the watercolor on the bottom so that my plant looks like it has a base that it's sitting on and it's not floating in the air. And that's kind of why I went in a circle. Anyways, I jabbed my finger with a thorn from a rose and now my, my finger's sore. And so there is our card with uh, watercolor background. So thanks for joining me again today and, wel and welcome if you're new, actually. So if you like the card that we did today, please like and um, maybe subscribe and you'll see whenever I add a new card. And thanks for being here. So watch for Monday and uh, Monday's video. I will have a different style of a sympathy card on there. Thanks everybody. Bye.